What is up my cubers? Welcome to another Chill MTG Vintage Cube video. If you are here for cube, you have come to the right place. I am putting out weekly cube videos because no one should go a whole week without experiencing the greatest magic format of all time. And that is cube. And uh, we are gonna jump in here. Pick one, pack one. What would you take out of this pack? <laughs> I think it's gonna be the Mox Emerald, right? Uh, Mox Emerald known as the weakest Mox, uh, just cause usually green doesn't need additional ramp. Still gonna snap it up, love to take it. And just cause there's, you know, people don't like to play green ramp with a Mox Emerald doesn't mean that we're not gonna do that. All right, well, if there's one reason to go into green, it's sitting here in the pack right now, and that's Crater Hoof Behemoth. That card is a house, wins games on the spot. That is like the best target for natural order. And, uh, Really nice to see after a Mox Emerald. All right, we got Rex Sage here. I'm excited to try out Loran of the Third Path. I'm wondering if MTG is going to put it into the cube this uh, this iteration, December. Loran's that uh, white Rex Sage variant that just came out in Bro. There's also a Finhorn Helves in here. If we want to stay open, there's a Prismatic Vista. Also, don't overlook Witherbloom Command. I think I'm going to put Witherbloom Command in my own personal cube. That card's a house in Vintage Cube. I'm just going to pick up the Elves here, though, and... Here we get past a fourth pick, Ruffellos. Sometimes green's heavily cut, and uh, but right now it's not. Uh, I definitely know the drafters to our right are not in green because Ruffellos is also a top pick in green. Also, if you haven't checked it out already, I'm doing a shorts countdown advent calendar style from the Magic 30 secret layer. I think we just, uh, by the time this video comes out, I think we would have opened 20... 2009, 2010, but uh, going back in time, new year each day, I got the playlist link below. Also coming out, there's Cube for Charity, gonna be uh, Jaybro and Jim Davis doing their annual Cube Charity event, the 26th through 28th of December. I got a pretty spicy promo video coming out for that and I'm excited to share. Uh, and uh, so stay tuned, I'll, I'll be sure to advertise that when that's coming out. Well, there's a Ketria Triome. I think, I don't like this pick. I think Questing Beast is just a broken card. I'm taking Ketri to try home here because I think that uh, I want to try to maybe do the turns thing and I'm going to need blue mana. That's where we get all the time walks and stuff. So if we're doing turns or I'm angling towards turns, I want to take this regrowth as well. Here's a Misty Rainforest. Probably the best card in this pack, especially after we picked up a Ketri to which can be fetched off that Misty Rainforest. Uh, I, I'm really angling pretty hard towards this blue-green Simic archetype. Hmm. There's a Toski. P is great, but it's double red, and Ob requires black, and I do not like Mizium Mortar, so I think the only pick here for us is the Toski. Ooh, tree speaker versus clamp. That's actually a tough decision, right? Because playing these one, one, you know, mana dorks clamp is pretty good, uh, to enable some additional card draw tree, tree speakers. Also, uh, ideal ramp target. Yeah, this is, I, I'm kind of torn. I think we could have, could have taken the skull clamp there for sure. Uh, I think I'll take a horizon canopy here. I like these draw lands, even if half the card is off color, they're just, Good flood insurance. Rex Sage coming around. Love that utility spell in the vintage cube here. There's just so many targets for it, right? Here's Escape to the Wilds. I think that's a great draw spell. And we do have that Ketria Triumph already, uh, which has that mountain land type to help cast it. All right. Nothing here for us. Ooh, there's a hunt master. Love how late that card wheels. That card's pretty good utility spell, so we'll take it. Really happy with this first pack. Uh, pretty solidly green with maybe a splash of red. And we do have a fixing and a fetch to help cast these spells. <laughs> ding, ding. Man, Cradle and Sapphire in the same pack. We're obviously taking Sapphire here. This is going to push us to be green blue a little bit more just on color moxin super nice i did like gaia's crate on the other pack maybe it'll come around Ooh, here's a taiga and a windswept heath 
We already have a green fetch, so I think we take the Taiga here with the two red cards that we want to splash, mm -hmm. Escape to the Wilds and Huntmaster. So let's get the, the dual land. Corsair, Ballista, Fable, and a Copper Line Gorge. Fable's such a strong card, but Corsair's pretty good in a green deck. Help me get those lands off the top. Hmm. Gargaroth is a great green card. Probably don't need Mox Diamond. It's also a Time Twister here. So Time Twister are pretty good in green decks because, right, you empty your hand playing Mana Dorks and then you can refill with Time Twister. Because that's some of the danger with having so many Mana Dorks in a deck is you just you play your Mana Dorks and you have no payoff, right? So so Tom Twister fits really nice. We already have the blue fixing and the Misty, the Ketri, and the Mock Sapphire. So I think it's a sweet pickup. Plus, it's part of the power non, right? Elvish Mystic, Stomping Ground, even an Omnath. I hate overloading on Mana Dorks, but we already have a Taiga. So I'm going to take the Mystic here. And I think we're just good for ramp now. This is where that Skull Clamp would have been really key, right? Have a Skull Clamp here instead of Jiraga, it might be even better. We do have the Escape to the Wilds though for card draw and the Tom Twister, so I'm happy with that. There's a Natural Order, it's exactly what we are looking for. Turn our Elvish Mystic into a Crater Hoof Behemoth later in the game. Natural Order is such a key card for green decks. Ooh, Caracas, huh? No, I think here, so I need to get some more top end, some beaters. I mean, shoot, there's even an abrade. I think Kogla is the pick here actually here, right? Just ramp into a 7-6 beater that uh, destroys artifacts and enchantments and fights when it comes into the battlefield. We can't have all ramp and no pamp. So got to pick up some pamp here. Noble Hierarch is perfect for that blue splash here with the Tom Twister. It's also a pest infestation though, but no, let's take the Hierarch here. Can sack Hierarch to natural order, turn it into a Crater Hoof Behemoth. The circle of life continues in green. Wow, guys, Cradle Wield. We'll just snap that up as fast as possible, right? All right, so we have as much ramp as we need. Now we just need to make sure we can get to that late game. Some mid-range cards here and some interaction for sure is what we're looking for now. Not playing Eureka. Maybe Recruiter here. We do have white fixing in both Horizon Canopy and Noble Hierarch. Fable Wield, huh? Yeah, this is a mispick taking Emrakul. We should definitely take the Fable here and... Now that I'm a much more mature drafter than I was when I did this game, uh, I would take Fable there. Fable's making the deck, right? Where Emrakul is a hedge. I suppose if we open channel, we can put the Emrakul in, but yeah, I, I would have loved to have had Fable there. Here I'll take the Gargaroth because of the mid-range value. Gargaroth just shuts down aggressive decks pretty quick. Stomping ground. It's pretty nice to see here. Consideration for Omnath. But I think the white splash is just a little much. So we'll just take the redundant fixing. Yep, we'll take an O stone here. Round it out. Pack two. High tide. All right. Pack three. What do you got for us? Hmm. Nisa, right? It's also a Scalding Tournament. Nisa is also too good. You can just win games straight with Nisa by herself. She enables other plays like, you know, doubling your mana. Too good. Too strong. I don't think we need Arbo Elf here. I like Renin 6. We do have one fetch. There's Dryad, but there's also like a Waterlogged Grove or an Augur. I think Augur is probably the pick here. But the fact that we're three colors kind of helps me lean towards Dryad a little bit. And there's also just interaction, right? Straight in Brazen Borrower. But Brazen Borrower, we just wouldn't be able to cast Brazen Borrower. Just Petty Theft. Yeah, I think the pick here is between Augur and Dryad. I think either are fine. Augur, sweet. 
I like Sheldock here, but I also like Tovalar. Tovalar is some another good top end for green. It's also an unholy heat. I think Tovalar will wheel based off what we saw around here. So I'm going to take that, that unholy heat. Hex Drinker, broken. Got to take it. Totally unfun to play with that card, but uh, it's too good to pass up for as long as it's in the cube, unfortunately. I'm hoping uh, MTG takes Hex Drinker out of the cube. And when I say MTG, I mean Carmen Handy. That's uh, MTG's her Twitter handle. There's a Tireless Tracker. I think that's our pick here. Helping us make land drops or are making our land drops more useful by making clue tokens. Hmm. Maybe Progenitus here, because we have the natural order. I don't play Progenitus too much just because the only way we can get it into play is with the natural order, but it's a pretty decent target. In case we already have something like Crater Hoof in our hand or we don't have a lot of creatures on the battlefield is a good alternative. Ooh, fast bond. So we already have the Time Twister, we have Augur, we have Courser, we have ways to play lands off the top, and the draw seven, I like Fast Bond here. All right, there's a Halana and Elena. They're really powerful, and we are playing green-red, so I think that's the pick here. The, other, the only other option is like Firebolt, but Halana and Elena is a lot more fun. So it looks like we're, you know, Gruel with a splash of blue. Moist gruel, if you will. Teamer, if you're old school. <laughs> Arbor Elf, Goblin Bombardment, and a Legionnaire. I guess we'll just take the Elf. I don't know if it's going to make the deck, though. I'm going to take a Bombardment just, just in case. Like, Arbor Elf's not going to make the deck. Maybe Bombardment's a sideboard card. I haven't played with Bombardment enough. I, I don't know if it's good. There's not really like a sacrifice archetype in the vintage cube. We'll see how December's iteration looks, but that's what's kind of missing for cards like Goblin Bombardment. Hmm. Jetmere's Garden for another Mountain Forest and Inferno Titan. I just, I think Inferno Titan's better, but we're not playing double pip red. That's the only thing, so can't really take it. All right, Tovalar did wheel. Pretty nice. I love our top end. I, I really like the way this deck has come together. Hmm. Yeah, rounding out pack three, it looks like here. Jockle hops and knight. Pretty traditional 14th and 15th picks. Smokestack. Okay, let's build this thing. Okay, Teamer Ramp incoming. Here's the deck. Crater Hoof Behemoth, Guy's Cradle, Natural Order, Rafelos. <laughs> so many good cards. Two on color mocks in here. Uh, I don't see how this deck can lose. I mean, I know how it loses, and that's I misplay. Kind of standard. But this deck is top tier for Teamer. Uh, so let's take it into the league and see if we can earn a trophy. All right, welcome. Match one, game one, playing Hey Daniel. And let's just keep this. We have Anissa and a Horizon uh, canopy. And what's cool about the Horizon canopy is the fact that we can sack it to draw a card. Going to fetch out with the Misty to start here. We'll probably just get the Taiga here so we can turn one Noble Hierarch. My opponent, Crypt Breakers. So probably reanimator. Draw four drop, a little unfortunate here. Only because I was hoping for a two or three drop to play it this turn. Uh, we'll attack with the Hierarch. We're not gonna, they can't activate their Crypt Breaker. Let's get in for a point of damage, play a land, pass the turn. Yep, looks like they're going to choose to activate. Draw a Toski. So let's get the Huntmaster down. So make a 2-2. Two, two. Expect our opponent. Yep, here they activate. What do they discard? Archon. That's scary. Archon's probably the best reanimation target in the cube. They do play a Plains, though, so on Orzov. 
into dam. All right, so they target the hunt master. We still got value off of it with our 2-2 two -two wolf token. And this next turn, we're going to be able to slam Nisa. Tireless tracker is another great draw. Nisa coming down, though, will untap a forest, and we can attack it in pretty, pretty cleanly here. Yep, exalted trigger. So single attacker. I mean, but if they reanimate that Archon, like, I don't know how to deal with that. Apparition, all right. What do they take? Just the Hierarch? That's fine. Now that Nisa's doubling our mana, I don't need Hierarch mana anymore. So we have two, four, six, eight mana this turn. So we can Toski and Tireless Tracker. Tireless Tracker post in second main here. So that way we can attack with our two forests and then play Ketria Triumph for the clue token. Toski pretty nice in this situation because any damage we get through will be allowing us to draw cards. And I'm fine with that double block. Drawing some cards. Mock Sapphire. Okay. Hmm. We. No, I'm going to play the Tireless Tracker here. We could play around a board wipe by not playing it, but we're kind of doing that just by getting the clue tokens off of Tireless Tracker. And we'll be able to sack this clue token here and to turn off the Taiga. Pretty good turn for us. Still got to evade a reanimation spell, I think. Kitchen Fink's not scary whatsoever. It's going to prolong our opponent, what they got going on, but we're going to start drawing cards here. Nisa's nice close to ultimate. I, <laughs> just kind of crazy. All right. I'm going to play the Horizon Canopy here just to sack it and draw a card. Renin 6, pretty nice uh, here because if we can kill the Kitchen Finks, Renin 6 can down tick and finish it off. Draw another card off the Tireless Tracker. Flooding out a little bit, but untap our forest here and get in again. And again, Toski going to help us draw some cards, which is pretty nice. Is this a lethal attack? 5, 11, 12, 13? No, not quite. Close, though. All right, opponent trades. We draw a bajillion cards. <laughs> wow, those are four sweet hits. Um, So we do actually have six mana here. So we can play Ren, and we can play, like, Alana Helena. I'll just get the Mystic down, because that way we can play Halana next turn. Okay, yeah, there's not going to be a next turn. That was uh, that was kind of a beating against our opponent. All right, game two. Uh, yeah, we can keep this. Noble Hierarch ramp us into Rex Sage and then Nisa Elder Gargaroth. Tyler's Tracker was another nice draw as well. See if the opponent can mount a stronger game two here. Wow. Aggressive. They snuff out the Noble Hierarch. Then they play an Orzhov Signet. We do have the Rex Sage in hand, but we are going to have to take a turn now since they killed our Noble Hierarch. So that'll be the plan. Pass it back. Try to Rex Sage next turn. Pack Rat, huh? All right, well, we'll Rex Sage here. I don't have an immediate answer to this pack rat. Are they going to start activating? No, they play a Grim Monolith. 
And no attacks by the pack rat. That's got to be a misplay, right? Like, all right, we do draw a land, which means we can turn on our tireless tracker, which is nice. And then we're just one mana away from Nisa. And Nisa's going to blow this game wide open. So I think we get in here. If they want to trade a pack rat token for tapping their grim monolith, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, no trades. Damn again. All right. They had to tap both black mana to do it, which means no activations again on a pack rat. If there's something that's not good to play, that's a pack rat and then never activate it. Pack rat is meant to be activated. All right, there's the fifth land. Let's get Nisa on the battlefield. We'll untap, swing in, and pass it back. Five damage coming at the opponent's face here. Yeah, I, th I think our mis opponent has misprioritized or misplayed this game so far because they could be making pack rat tokens right now. Are they finally doing one? No, they're just playing kitchen, sphinx kitchen finks. All right, they should top their grim monolith to make a pack rat token now, I think. Halana and Elena. Tom Twister, we have everything here. Though I don't want a Tom Twister right now. Our opponents just got two mana in hand. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. It's a little short. So I guess we just Kogla here and blow up their Grim Monolith. Or wait, no, I'm sorry. We Kogla here and we fight and we fight the Pack Rat. Yeah, Kogla does so much. Enters the battlefield, it fights. Attacks, it destroys artifacts. Nah, let's get this pack rat out. I think that's the only, like, our opponent should be making tokens for a while now. Now they're finally going to make a token. Okay. Sure. Now we're able to play Helena and Helena, which is super awesome. We'll put some plus two, plus two counters on our Kogla. Give it haste. Oh, this is gross. This is a beating. Partner up there. 9-8 Haste Kogla coming at you. <laughs> Destroy your monolith. Your monolith. Gross. All of this is enabled by the mana efficiency of Nisa. Yeah. Pack rat down. I get a persist trigger. And our board state is just so much better than theirs. Council's Judgment, what do they vote for? They vote for Kogla, but it's just going to be too little too late here. Like, Alana and Elena makes every card we play game-ending, basically. Because we're going to get a 8-8 Hasty Gargaroth here, which is just insanely broken. <laughs> How are you going to stop this one? You're not. Yeah, should be lethal here. This is 14, 15, 16 damage. Yeah, all right. Game one down. Team of Ramp, super dominant. Let's head into match two. All right, welcome to match two. We are playing against Fortuluffy, and we are on the play with a tree speaker and hierarch in hand. Going to keep this uh, because we can probably just time twister our way into a fresh seven. So I think we should go return one Noble or return one Jiraga. Probably doesn't matter, I don't think. We'll get the Hierarch down, and if uh, the Hierarch eats a Bolt, then this hand gets infinitely worse. All right, looks like Oprah gets another Green Drafter, but they play Fast Bond. How many lands are coming down? Two so far with Field of the Dead. My time twister looks a lot worse now that our opponent has a fast bond <laughs> on the battlefield. We'll get our Draga tree speaker in and level them up. I'll still time twister though. Ugh. Will I? <laughs> Man, that fast bond is a beating. Opponent's down to two cards. They're going to love this time twister as much as we are. Oh, and they... Ren and six. So there goes the blue mana source. All right, we're going to have to find a new game plan now. Mox Emerald not in the game plan. And I like our opponent's opening, uh, you know, but they're down to just a single card in hand. Unfortunately, our hand is basically 
mountain right now with a Tom Twister and a Progenitus that we cannot cast. Dryad comes down. So all their lands top for all the mana. We draw another land. Yeah, Tom Twister would have been great. Can't really do anything about it right now, though. So we'll just level up this tree speaker. We could have leveled them up last turn as well. I never really find leveled up tree speaker to do anything. So it's kind of like playing with a fidget spinner right now. Just something to do with the mana. All right. So opponent still needs, what, like two more land tops before Field of the Dead is turned on? Crop rotation, kind of scary. Do they have Dark Depths? They do not have Dark Depths. Okay. Uh, but they are using Ren to get their Sacrifice Forest out of the graveyard. And then they Marari's Wake. Ugh. All right. So they have a bajillion mana. What do we have? We have a Horizon Canopy. Oh, well, start by cracking Canopy, yeah? What can we get here? All right, Huntmaster is a start. Because maybe our opponent doesn't draw anything and it just flips our Huntmaster for us. There's the mid-range value of Huntmaster shining through. All right, well, now our opponent's field is turned on. Luckily, I don't have any fetch lands or anything to really go off with Ren and Six. Our Huntmaster will flip, though, which is nice. But I can't kill the zombie token because of that Marari's wake out. So can I deal two damage to... the? Yeah, okay, we can deal damage to a Planeswalker. So we can deal damage to Ren and Six here. I mean, this Tom Twister is just so bad for us. Not only... Okay, Tovalar is another good draw, which we can cast. All right. Well, we're, we're getting some action here against our opponent's opening. And the fact that Tovalar uh, can fight with the wolves is going to help us get through this board. Now, I do expect to see a double block here. No, they just let their Ren die. Wow. All right, library coming down with zero cards in hand. Love to see it. All right, so again, they did not cast any spells, so our Tovalar flips. So now we can fight with wolves and we can attack and make more wolves. Can my Ravager fight? Does that count as a wolf? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, I'm going to attack here. Our opponent has to figure out the right way to block, and I'm going to hold up Threat of Activation with Tovalar, Tovalar's fight ability. I'm just going to out-token generate here. Now we got five wolf tokens. They basically have to triple block Tovalar to kill it. Okay. I'm happy to deal four damage to the Dryad, and then we can fight a wolf onto the Dryad. Play our Finhorn Elves here and pass the turn. And it's still nighttime, which is awesome. Our opponent cannot cast two spells to reflip back to day. So that means we'll attack again and get more wolf tokens out of Tovalar. Time walk. <laughs> Ugh. That's uh, basically just a cycler right now. All right, prime time. Prime time's. Uh, a good answer here. Another 7-7 seven, seven on the battlefield to deal with Tovalar. And they'll get two triggers off their Field of the Dead. Which is pretty nice. And unfortunately, our opponent's tokens are just a little bit bigger than our wolf tokens. All right. Hex Drinker is a way to end this game. So I think we attack with Tovalar. I want to incentivize a block with the Prime Time. The prime time attacking and generating more value to, with the field of the dead on the battlefield is a little scary. And but I think our real path to victory here is two attacks with a six six hex drinker. 
It's kind of funny that we got two protection from everything spells here in our hand. So we can level up this hex trigger to level eight right away because of the tree speaker and Finhorn Elves. All right, opponent gets in there. It's a good attack as they need to get damage in. Unfortunately, we're just going to eat this prime time by trading a hex drinker and like a wolf token. And then I can eat their other zombie tokens. That clears up the board a lot. And we still have the two biggest creatures. Uh oh, what's this? Woodfall Primus. That's not that scary to be honest. As, yeah, they can only blow up a land and they have no answer for this Hex Drinker. And then they concede. Interesting. I would have given it one more turn, but uh, I do see the frustration, right? Playing against an opponent that's got protection from everything creatures, which is why I personally don't like playing them in my own cube. So, all right. Let's run this back to game two. All right, game two on the draw. Let's keep this. We got a natural order in hand and two one drop mana dorks. All right, opponent leads out turn one library this time, which is much better than when they had zero cards in hand. We do get a hex drinker. Uh, let's fetch out a taiga and just uh, get as greedy as possible. We'll get the Jiraga, level it up next turn, and play both the Finhorn and the Hex Drinker. Opponent just draws, which is fine by us, because I kind of want some Tom to, to, oh no. All right, we drew the Crater Hoof, which is not what you want to see. Um, It's right, and we can't level up the Jiraga, because the Ketri Triumph's tapped. Yeah, so Natural Order is going to be for progenitus now which is still a good natural order target time walk pretty good here allowing our opponent to draw some more off the uh, library wall of roots okay yeah let's just level up Level up the tree speaker here and let's play Courser. Hopefully we can find another land on the top. No, we find a fast bond, which is about the opposite of a land when you have no land in hand. Okay. I still think our answer here is natural order for progenitus as we absolutely, at least we know we're not drawing it next turn, right? I'm going to place field into Uro. Yeah, they're on the, you know, the, the lands thing but the Fairlands thing, right? Because they don't have Dark Depths combo. They are getting closer to turning on their field, but I just don't think it's going to matter with Progenitus. So nice to get a land off the top there. And then we can play Fast Bond and get another land, which is kind of cool. We'll pay the two. Um, So we have one, two, three, four, five, six mana. Can I Nisa and Natural Order? I don't think we can. Let's see if our opponent blocks here. This is just a see what happens attack. I'm trying to get them like to lose two life because that's a whole another turn with Progenitus. All right, so we'll sack our Finhorn here. Get the Progenitus. Ooh, there's another land. Love to see it. And we can get the Hex Drinker down, level up the Hex Drinker a couple times as well, and pass the turn. That was a pretty good turn for us. Power of Fast Bond, right? Well, Power of Fast Bond and Natural Order. So you got to have a board wipe or a way to make me sacrifice the Progenitus to deal with it. And unfortunately, those effects aren't really in blue and green, and our opponent concedes the match that was a quick one let's head into the finals match three
Here we are, welcome to match three in the finals. And if you've been enjoying the content, do me a favor, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, give me a like, it really helps to grow the channel. Leave a comment if you like talking cube. I try to respond, I do respond to all the comments. Um, here's a great hand, Taiga Mox Emerald into Rafelos, turn one. We'll pass it over to our opponent, MGB831, who opens up with a Plains Swords. Yes. Ooh, our hand gets a lot worse without that Rafelos. We'll just play the Finhorn Elves there and pass. Not play a land drop, super awkward. And then our opponent, Relic Warders, are Mox. That's very painful. We needed that to play a Courser. Now we have no turn, you know, no land. Draw a Toski. Was hoping to get that Courser down and play some lands off the top. And then our opponent plays Adelon. Looks like we're up against Mono White. And this is a pretty good Mono White start. Crater Hoof. Yep, that's the opposite of a land. Eight drop, if you didn't know. GTA. Well, you know how I feel about GTA. That's game. That's game. It would kill our mana dork. That was a very quick loss. Game one to Mono White. Wow, let's uh, let's see if we can turn that one around. All right, game two on the draw this time. This could be a keep, but that proje that you know the progenitus in the hand. It's kind of like a free mulligan. Yeah, this is better. All right, how do we maximize this fast bond va value though? I really want tireless tracker on the battlefield with all these lands and fast bond. All right, I'll put the Triome back. I think we probably could have put the Mox Emerald back to play around their Relic Order. The Misty will count as two land drops for the Tireless Tracker. Let's just give it one turn here. Planes go, huh? Please no Mana Tithe. Oh, it pay it pains me to play around mana tithe like that because we lose out on on a clue trigger but gotta do it can't get mana tithe otherwise our hand just does nothing we get the i think like i want to get an untap land but i also want a blue source so we'll just get the blue source and we can play the clue token next turn crack clue tokens next turn all right a Danto Vanguard. Jiraga is not what we're looking for. Let's crack some clues here. I kind of forgot Jiraga has summoning sickness. Can't tap it. We can still get in here with the Tireless Tracker. As the Adanto Vanguard only gets its plus two plus zero when it's attacking. We draw Rafelos off the clue token. So that means we're going to have a million mana. See what our opponent's next play is. Silver Blade, okay. That means that Danto's hitting for six. Yeah, get in there. All right. We'll just take it. Now we're down to 11 off the fast bond pinging. Ooh, and there's Nisa. All right, so Nisa is the play here. And if our opponent would like to trade their Silver Blade with a Tireless Tracker or a Force Token, I'm okay to do that. As we are swinging for seven. Oh no, our opponent wants to get aggressive. All right. Not going to play the Rafelos, just going to hold it as I'd rather block the Silver Blade Paladin. Okay, they just get in there with the Adanto Vanguard. I will block here. I want to keep my Nisa around. We can also tap the elf here to crack our clue token. Grow our tracker, draw a card. Courser, nice. Okay, Mox. Well, the Courser means we're basically done drawing lands. As we'll be able to play them off the top of our library. Come on, land. No, natural order. Okay, well, 
That's gonna be good because we can natural order for Crater Hoof next turn. But I'm gonna make our opponent block here. We are attacking for lethal. Oh yeah, four untapped mana. Okay, this is definitely a misplay. So they Restoration Angel, which means they're gonna be able to eat one of our forests and they could block the Tireless Tracker, a forest. Yeah, maybe I should have reconsidered with four untapped white mana. Knowing that we're drawing natural order next turn, we want as many creatures around as possible. So with that state of events happening the way it did, I'm gonna play the Rafelos now uh, just for another creature as we'll need it to, you know, sack the natural order to or something. We just need to not die this turn. That Corsair Crufix doing a great job on defense against the Adanto. All right, opponent figures, not scary. And Lion Sash, also not scary. And Selfless Spirit, also not scary. Would be scary. I mean, they're just playing out their hand, but we're going to natural order for Crater Hoof here, and that will be enough. Forced off the top is nice. I don't know what's up with my mana tapping there. It's not going to matter. We'll go get the Crater Hoof, and that should be game. And this is why Natural Order Hoof are some of the best green cards to draft. All right. Game three on the draw. Gonna keep this hand. It's got mana dorks. I like Escape to the Wilds. Let's go turn one Jiraga. Turn two Rafelos. And hopefully we can make something happen here. Red Source would be great for Escape to the Wilds. All right, no plays on turn two. That's super weird from Mono White. Hmm. I don't really know how to play around anything here. So our options are to level up the tree speaker. But if they remove it, then we just kind of lose out on our turn. We can just play the Rafellos without leveling up the tree speaker. Or we can play Elvish Mystic. That none of those sound great. Like, I think we just. Yeah, this is this is like playing defensively. And I don't think it's a good way to play, to be honest with you. All right, I attack and then they flash in containment priest, which makes sense seeing that we played natural order and now we just lose our tree speaker. Yeah, that was just really poor play on our part. Definitely throwing up the punt counter for just defensive play like we, I just played a line trying not to lose, but it's just like a very poor play. Now they do have dismember, so I'm guessing they would have dismembered our Jiraga as well had we leveled it up. But yeah, I don't know. That was just really poor play here in the finals. Let's see, do we get Toski down now? They have one open mana for mana tithe. I think we do though, right? Like it's mana efficient and we need red. Yeah, see, I think we play Toski there. That is, because what are we going to do with this Rafelos mana? This game three is just like really disgusting. Our opponent plays Adelon, triggers it. We're not going to block. And now we're behind. Yeah, I do like sacking the canopy there because Rafelos offers so much mana. Okay, Koglo is a great draw. Great draw. So now let's, we're playing around Mana Tithe and now we can fight this Adelon. Love Kokolo there. Nice. All right, I think we're back in it. Toski can help enable some shenanigans here. We really need a red mana. Ooh, Palace Jailer is really good as well, taking that Kogla off the board. But if we can ever take the Monarch back, we're gonna get another trigger off the Kogla. It'll be really nice. I just don't think we're going to be able to do it. And now our opponent's drawn cards. We draw a land, another green source. We have all the green sources we need. I would even love something like Tom Twister right now. 
and our opponent plays Caracas. All right, if you didn't notice, uh, the three creatures that we do have are all legendary, and they follow up with Leonic Leon and Relic Order. This take the blue source. Having only legendary creatures when your opponent is playing Caracas is super sad. At least we draw a Tovlar, which is not legendary, which is pretty important. And gets us some blockers and consequently some more attackers as well. Again, we just need to get that Kogla back. If we can get the Monarch back, we have a chance. All right, Elite Spellbinder. Another blocker for our opponent. They take Halana and Elena. And then they play a Thalia. A lot of blockers. All right, well, there's a Taiga. So let's play Halana and Elena. I want to give my Toski like counters in haste, but I just know they're going to activate Caracas here. So let's just put our counters on one of these wolf tokens. Having that Thalia is pretty good for them as it gives them first strike. Okay, they return Halana and Elena to our hand. Gonna attack here. I think I should attack with the Tovlar as well just to help clear some of the board. But we are at nine, which is a problem. All right. So they throw their Containment Priest in front of the token. Yeah, I can't fight things yet. Otherwise, if it was nighttime, I'd just fight, you know, our way through this. We'll replay Toski, but they're just going to retap Caracas. <clears throat> They've drawn at least three or four cards here off the Monarch. I think we need to play Escape next turn. Selfless Spirit is a good draw. So now they got two Flyers. And a way to survive. All right, we need natural order, I think, here to get Crater Hoof. I think it's the only way we win. And even then, it's close. Ooh, he's got a Restoration Angel as Palace Jailer. Gross. Gross. I mean, good for them, but gross for us. Yeah, take the Tovlar. Hmm. Yep. Now I don't think we have enough creatures on the battlefield to... All right. Tireless Tracker, huh? So they got five points of damage in the air. Toski has to attack. They can... I'm playing Halana and Elena here, but... I'm just hoping they don't. Bounce it with Caracas or something. Not sure. All they have to do here is block three creatures. Um, the three four is a pretty good blocker. So is the two one first strike. Yeah, like we just didn't. I think our opponent had the answers had we even played differently, like more aggressively from the start. But what lost us this game or the way we lost was Caracas with our three legendary creatures. Yep. All right. Now our opponent's got lethal. That'll do it. Could not take down the trophy, unfortunately, but that was a pretty sweet teamer deck. Couldn't quite bring down the trophy, but uh, maybe next time, right? So anyways. Thanks for hanging. Thanks for chilling with me here. Don't touch that dial and let's keep cubing.